of these events is to let people in the community know about job opportunities on the Central Quarter Light Rail Project, both for contractors and subcontractors, as well as workforce participants. Um, contractors will be looking to hire subcontractors to help with the work for skills that uh, the contractors perhaps lack, and so they'll go out and hire subcontractors or specialists in certain areas so they can um, bid on a project successfully. And uh, we're encouraging people now to get ready before the bids go out so they can be prepared. Some uh, firms may need to hire more people or people with certain skills so that they can qualify for these contracts. And you can't wait to the last minute to do that. And also, um, firms may want to take the opportunity to become certified as disadvantaged business enterprises if they're a minority-owned or a woman-owned small business. Um, they need to get the certification in place ahead of time. The Met Council then needs to, to check their paperwork and make sure that they're a legitimate DBE and qualify under the rules for that. And so you, you want to have all that work done ahead of time before the contracts start coming up. And they're going to start coming up in the next few months. The construction of the light rail line will begin late summer 2010. And if you um, look back at the November making tracks that was issued recently, there were some tables in there that explained when the various contracts are going to be coming up and going to be advertised. So it's, it's very soon. Um, you know, when we do site visits, or I think we call them on sites, where we ask those kinds of questions, and you'd be surprised how many times we sit down and we're talking face to face, and it's pretty obvious that no, they've been answering the phones. They can't tell you what the biggest contracts are for the last two years. They can't tell you how the work is done. They don't participate in bidding. When we call places, they say they've had contracts, but they go, oh, no, we used to deal with you know, Mr. So and so. So there are ways we find out the level of ownership control is what we call it. Ownership, 51% control, kind of who really runs this, who makes the last call when you're bidding on a contract and there's a dispute about what the contract price should be, who typically wins? Who has the last say? And so the on-site is to get at those sorts of things that you kind of can't get at on paper. And then the, the advantage for, say, a minority firm to get DB certification is do they, a certain percentage of contract work is set aside. It's not really set aside, to, but it's a goal. It's a goal. A goal is a good way to put it. To, well, that the project will hire a certain percentage of minority or women-owned firms. And so that helps, gives them a, for, no, helps for, them compete. For individuals who want to work for companies that are likely to be strong competitors for bids like this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're preparing now to have the skills, <clears throat> are, are are you working with the, the Votex and the colleges and the, uh, so that... Uh, they're already formulating the, the curriculum for the skills that are going to be required and, and that they're saying, you know, this is the field if you start with this, these are the fields that are, these are the jobs that are going to be available when this thing starts the, the, out. Remember the list I showed that had the, the, the things? Most Votec schools train in one of those areas and if not union students. And so we've been working with the unions and like Mary Dahlquist and the whole the Coalition for Diversity and Construction, those are all, um, include Votex and um, social service organizations. To say, here's what we need. Well, for job training and things like that. Here's the list of what we need. We're just saying what we need. The types of um, skills. And so now you can begin directing the people that you're training in those skills already to the possibility of working on the bike rail for one of the contractors. And back this past May at the Ambrose Wilder headquarters, we had a specific a big, workforce. Um, what do you call that? Yeah, it, was a, it was like a workforce mixer, I think we called it. Yeah. And we had people who were interested in being trained in construction. We had um, construction companies interested in people who were being trained in construction. And we also had the trades, um, I mean, the, you know, the training places, like the Botex, and the union apprenticeship programs, all in the same space, so that people who want to be trained could talk to the training organizations. People who had been trained from a Botech and needed to do the next step with the apprenticeship and the unions could talk to the unions. And then these construction companies who were interested in finding a diverse pool of employees could talk to the whole matter. Will there be other types of industry or, that aren't related to the construction directly, that, but they might be uh, new jobs that pop up in different phases on the council itself or on the or with organizations that are involved with the building of the? Well, 
know what will happen is I think that um, would, there are two, two ways to answer that. One, the council has like 3,700 employees. So there's a vast array of opportunities, like any large company, that are popping up all the time. Um, with particularly the light rail, one of the things we always tell people is that, you know, we have kind of a whole bus and we already have a current light rail system. And there is a path for bus drivers